In this tutorial, we're going to use the Part Design Workbench to model a chest rook. To start, we're going to create a new file and save it. Before we switch to the Part Design Workbench, we're going to take a quick look at another workbench that's available in FreeCAD. That's the image workbench. The image workbench will let us import a 2D image file to use as base geometry to sketch around. So I've downloaded an image from Shutterstock. Uh, the link is in the description. I'm going to position that on the XZ plane, click OK, and then we'll switch to the front view. So having an image in the model will give us an outline to sketch around and give us a basic geometry to start from. Um, so with that done, we're going to switch to the part design workbench. We're going to create a body and we'll create a sketch on the XZ plane. So before we start the sketch, I'd like to move the image. Um, so the datum is at the bottom of the rook. Um, to do that, we can go to the model hierarchy, select the image, and then expand the placement and position. And then using the Z direction, we can shift the image up till it aligns with the bottom. There we go, 30 millimeters. With that done, we can switch back to the task pane, and then we can start the sketch. I'm going to select the polyline tool and sketch half of the rook's outline. Starting at the top, I'm going to draw a vertical line locked on the node. And then we're going to very roughly model from the bottom up, putting in some points to give us a basic shape. With that done, I'm going to press escape to close the polyline tool. Reselect the polyline tool and model from the top down, doing the same. Just putting in some basic points along the way. So all we're after is a very basic outline of the shape. Once we get to this point, I'm going to stop, press escape to come out of the polyline tool and use an arc tool. So I'm going to select the end point and rim point. So for this, we're going to select the end points, the start point, end point, and position, um, the arc rim. With that done, I'm going to press escape, fit the view, and now we can start to constrain the sketch. Um, so for this, we, we don't have to have it perfectly constrained. I'm just going to work through, check. Uh, if an auto constraint hasn't been applied on a vertical edge, I can select it and add a vertical constraint. The same with the horizontal. If they've not been auto applied, we can walk through the model pick all the edges that we want to remain horizontal and add a horizontal constraint. And then with that done, we can start to drag the model into shape. So you see, we didn't have to be too precise positioning um, the polyline to start with, because we can now walk around the model and drag it around to fit the image. I can see I've misselected the end of the arc here. So to ensure these points remain coincident, I can select them and add a coincident constraint. Okay, we'll have a look at the bottom. We'll drag this into shape. Okay, looking good. We'll move the arc position. and we'll fit the view. Well, it's generally best practice to fully constrain sketches. On this occasion, it's not that important. Once this sketch is complete, um, we'll revolve it round to create the 3D model and then add a few more features, such as a pad and some fillets. Um, so with that in mind, I'm gonna add a couple of constraints to kind of tidy up the model. So I'm gonna select these edges that look a similar size and give them an equality constraint and the same 
with these two edges. So with that done, I'm just going to drag the model around a little bit to position everything. It looks okay. With that done, we can ex exit the sketch by clicking the close button and we can use the revolve tool to create the 3D geometry. Okay, and we'll fit. And then we'll save the model. So now we can check the model against the sketch by selecting the tip or the last feature in the tree and pressing the space bar to turn the model on and off. We can see that we've got a good close match to the image that we started with. So with the model on and the image off, I'm going to orbit to the top view, select the top face and create a sketch. We can go ahead and create the castellated section of the rook. To do this, I'm going to select the rectangle tool, left click once, drag the mouse and left click again to complete the rectangle. Press escape to close the rectangle tool. And then to constrain uh, the rectangle, I'm going to choose the top left node, hold control, choose the bottom right node and the origin. And with those selected, I can use a symmetrical constraint and that locks the rectangle uh, with a symmetry about the origin. And I can choose the top horizontal edge and apply a horizontal constraint and give it a dimension of two millimeters and select the vertical edge and give that a dimension of 25 millimeters. With that done, I can exit the sketch by clicking close. Then we can apply a pocket two millimeters deep. So we'll just have a quick look at that by navigating to the front view and clicking save. And then we'll fit the view. Then we can go ahead and select the isometric view and create a pattern of the pocket feature by selecting the pocket, clicking OK, and we'll create five occurrences. Okay, with that done, we can click OK to accept. We'll save and fit the view. These pizza wedge shapes on the top look a bit bizarre, so we can get rid of those by either adding a cylindrical pocket to the top of the rook or by modifying the original sketch. Uh, to modify the original sketch, we'll double click on the sketch and then using the polyline tool, we'll create a pocket in the top of the shape. And once that's drawn, we can use the trim tool to trim out the original shape. And then we'll add a vertical constraint to this central edge. We can then exit the sketch. As you can see, that looks significantly better. So we'll save, we'll switch to the front view. So the final step for this model is to add a fillet to all the cylindrical edges. So we'll walk through the model holding control, left clicking on each of the edges to select them. We'll select the fillet tool, and then we'll add a fillet radius. Um, so if your model disappears like that, it's because the um, edges aren't long enough to fit in the radius that you've selected. So I'm just going to reduce mine to 0.75 millimeters, select OK. And then we can compare our model against the original image by turning the image on in the tree by selecting it and pressing the space bar. And then we can toggle our model by selecting that in the tree and pressing the space bar to toggle the model on and off. As you can see, it's a pretty good match to the image we started with. We'll go ahead and save. And there we have it, a basic chess rook. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up below or leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.